just right there. That's sort of boring. This is right there. Not too far away from where we already were. Oh goody! A ruin guard. Some ice dudes. <laughs> just digging through these abandoned ruin guards looking for something of value. Oh, is that so? The traveler so here seems like doing that a lot too. Dude. This is Dainsalif, the guy that we're pretty sure went on adventures with the sibling mm. before the sibling turned evil and started running the abyss and he's sworn to destroy the abyss order that our sibling is running. Got it. Yeah. Do we know that our sister is running it? No. Because oh. we don't know where our sister is. Our plot is to find her. Damn. <laughs> but Dainsalif knows we're the sibling. Because we're identical twins. <laughs> yes. And the Herald we just fought also put it together after fighting us for two seconds. Looking for chaos devices, chaos circuits. You know, That's that kind of stuff. That's why left. Yes. It's because oh. he's like, you are the one. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not allowed to punish you. Damn. <laughs> They're important materials. They're the only reason we fight ruin guards. Mm. They wouldn't be searching for such ordinary objects. In fact, I was nearby investigating precisely because abyss mages often come out from that ruin to explore. They seem to be searching the remains of ruin guards for a certain valuable object to take back to the ruins. Okay, but what in the ruin guards, man? You will know. However, they look disappointed, so it would seem they haven't found it yet. So they're just poking at different ones, hoping they have it in it. Well then, why didn't you grab one of them just now and ask what they were up to? <laughs> Deluxe done that before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I certainly don't mean to be merciful towards these monsters of the abyss. Ah, uh, if Dainsalif catches it, he's gonna kill it. <laughs> But I have a feeling that their plan with this object is of major importance to the entire Abyss Order. One cannot discover the truth behind it through interrogation. Or rather, these Abyss Mages likely fear something else, much more than they do a painful interrogation. Uh, Hyman is getting goosebumps thinking about all of this. <laughs> yeah. Alright, we shouldn't waste too much time here. Let's continue our search. Now where? Also, we need to heal Diluc again. So wait, if you were to have chosen the sister... It would be the brother. The brother would be, just be in the same position. Yes. Okay. But all of the trailers and marketing for the game have the player be the brother mm -hmm. and the sister be the villain. So that's sort of the planned version. But you can play as the sister with this sort of canon through trailers and stuff is the brother is gonna go and find out his sister has turned evil. Right. But I am happy to be the brother, if only because Venti is clearly his boyfriend. <laughs> and Zhao is his third boyfriend. And Kaya is his second boyfriend. And he's just, he's working through everybody. Getting all the boyfriends. <laughs> And all the girlfriends too. But a lot of the girlfriends are lesbians with each other, so I mean 
They're more for our sister than oh, they yeah. are for us. <laughs> because, like, the whole point of the flower festival was me and Lisa going out on patrol together for the whole festival. <laughs> Again, I love her dress and the way it flows when you walk around. Yeah, I mean, that's true. Wow. But I got a lot of other characters with dresses, so I'm not... I'm like... I got Rosaria wow. and Rosaria... I'm just gonna have to teleport her away and redo this. They locked me in a combo and I'm dead. Okay, I smell rabbit. Healed. Let's go try again. Pray I kill everything fast enough to be able to focus on it. the dangerous giant ruin guard that decides to missile bomb me. Oh, the wolf boy. Yeah, he's like, hi, bye. bye. Oh, I'm sad. <laughs> now I'm gonna go fight things. Rawr. Samurai armor and a fancy dress. Oh, I. Uh, <laughs> I. Is her name Noel? The, the the night girl, the night maid. I'm blanking on her name, but I'm pretty sure her dress is long. Because that's the whole thing is it's part of the plated armor. Dude, I am trapped in a bubble. That is so not fair. <laughs> Go. Look for the object. I'm a little busy trying not to die to look for an object at the moment. so many things at the moment. This is chaos. Madness. <laughs> Will they not like to back on me? Please. <laughs> 
There are no coincidences in the world. Everything is the fruit of seeds planted long ago. Great metaphor. Just like your appearance in that tavern. Time is just waiting for those seeds to sprout. I only heard about you by Forget chance. Forget it. Just some needless musings. Except for the part where you're destined to say of everyone, and meeting Dancelif was destined after you met. You know, after he met your sibling. The connection between the Abyss Order and the Ruin Guards is by no means... Rather, they are both branches that have grown out and up from the same roots below. Branches? Roots? Both originate from an ancient nation that was destroyed 500 years ago. Conria. Okay, I'm not gonna try and pronounce that. And because of Stevie's alarm, I couldn't hear it. So... That's the name of an ancient civilization, all right. Huh? Kanya? Kanya? Kani Ray? Because I want to say the R, but I don't think Paimon said the R. Really? The Abyss Order and Ruin Guards are left over from after the destruction of that nation? Kanria. Okay, Kanria. That's a little bit easier than it looks. Oh, speaking of Kanria. That's really a super ancient name! Ancient name that is very long. Oh, right. As your guide, Paimon should explain a bit here. A long time ago, the nation of Conria was... I know huh? about it. You have what? 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 <laughs> Hold up! You have memories of being there. But that nation was destroyed 500 years ago. Okay, I'm... Hmm. Dancel is just like, dot, dot, dot. Is that so? Well, everyone has their secrets. Uh, I would like to pry. You did not pry into uh, mine. The lore. So I shall not pry yeah, into this yours. is the lore. I would like to pry, please. But if you would like to tell me, I will listen. Walks up to Traveler with so, time to open the camera up. you saw, what was it like? What was it like? Okay. Okay, these all are confusing uh, me. Uh, uh, uh. I can't hide it. I'm gonna tell him the truth, but also all of these other ones have me greatly concerned. The god they contacted. So that's the complete story, huh? I even thought that you ran into that unknown god first. I see. 
So your first memory after coming to this world was being awoken by your sister from within that meteorite. Wait! Hold up! We're 500 years old. Wait. So... So there's a super long time skip from the opening... To now? To now. It seems your sister that, will that go makes first. Sense, honestly. But the question is, how long before you? And then your sister told you that the destruction of Kanria plunged the whole world into chaos. And that you two should leave this world called Tivat? They're both semi-gods of sorts. Oh yeah, no, there's they're they're the Avatar. They're semi-gods that can take control of all of the elements. They're something godly. Yeah, Lumine means sun and Ather means well, Ather means sun, Lumine means moon. Yeah. And they're that's their canon names. Sun and the moon, yes. You don't need to explain the, the twins. twins thing to the twin. Yeah. Thank you. The destruction of Conria. She Con said that? Conria. That destruction you witnessed, that's history from 500 years ago. It seems the first time you awoke in this world was indeed during that period. Then, then you went back to sleep for 500 years. <laughs> so so why did your sister wake you back up what again? Is, what is with all these games that have the main protagonist with sleeping bitch disease? <laughs> Sora, Noctis, Avatar. Avatar. Aang slept for 100 years, man. Ather. It's just like, we slept, whoops. Huh. So your sister must have understood this world better than you did, because she woke up first. And it was shortly after that that you encountered an unknown god who blocked your path. So you couldn't escape. Oh, so the cutscene that's the start of the game is us trying to flee because our sister's like, it's not safe, we need to leave. And Ather's like, I just woke up. And the sister's already done some adventure quest thing. And uh, the whole nation is burning, so yeah. that didn't go well. And she's like, okay, we're just we're just gonna leave. And this other god is like, no, bitch, you're gonna stay and fix this. And we were put back to sleep because we had done nothing. <laughs> we had done nothing. Oh, Paimon knows this part really well. I understand. And then, and then we woke up, and then we found Paimon in a lake while fishing. And somehow it had been 500 years later. When you awoke at that time and hurriedly tried to leave for another world, you didn't know anything about Kanria. Imagine waking up to the apocalypse. Yeah, it's like, the world is burning. Today. We gotta go. And so it's like, what do you remember of Kanria? Thanks of flames. Uh, this Nothing. is fine. The this is fine meme is all he remembers. But now, since you have come to gain some understanding of Tavat, you are able to guess that the war you witnessed all those years ago must be the war that ended Kanria. Am I right? Yeah. Ah, if that's the case, you must have been flipping through all sorts of books during our adventure these past few months. I was. I've, totally. I've been collecting all of the books, so yes. <laughs> Before going to Mondstadt, you had just looked at some vague materials. Later, we managed to gather a whole bunch of old books from all around Mondstadt and Liyue, but you told Paimon they were useless. They are useless. They were useless because they didn't help me remember anything, even though I read all of them. So, the whole time you were just trying to learn more about Conria so you could find your sister? Oh, yeah. You can travel around the Seven Nations to find the Seven, but where can you go to find a nation that was destroyed 500 years ago? To the ruins right here in Liyue? I mean, these are the ruins of the I nation. probably know more about Kanria than both of you. Probably. So can you answer our questions? Kanria was a nation without a god. Not because it had a god that died or abandoned them. But because it never had a god to begin ah, with. Ah, atheists. Okay. Ah, the atheists. We burned down the atheists. Whoops. It was a powerful nation, built purely by humans. An unprecedented, flourishing, and glorious civilization. It was the pride of humankind. But yeah, the ancient civilization is just Atlantis. Yo. 
They just made Atlantis again. Later events unfolded just as you remember. It was all destroyed by gods. It was destroyed by gods, but was our sister one of those gods? You mean that... 500 years ago, the gods descended upon the world and brought desolation to Kanya. Yeah, don't spoil it yet. I'm, I'm just guessing theories before it all is proven horribly wrong. But like, the gods descended, but it's not the current seven, is it? Because I'm sorry, I don't really believe Venti and his kingdom of freedom would come down and destroy another kingdom of freedom just because it didn't have a god. I don't really buy that, but I buy all the random gods that were fighting each other for territory, wiping out the place without a god, because there wasn't a god to protect it during those wars. I don't know. We'll find out. The pride of humankind was uprooted and crushed, like a weed removed from the garden of the gods. Yeah, Venti is older than it. I'm just saying that, that the gods weren't the seven 2000. 600 years ago. They became the seven only not recently, but like the last thousand years or so, I'd figure, as they fought all the other ones. And Zhang Li fought so many gods. Like, wow. So many dead gods in his ocean. How could that be? The history books don't say anything about that. Yes, well, continuing to discuss the past now will only dampen our spirits. <laughs> Either next time I see Venti or Zhang Li, or I need to hear the explanation from my boyfriends. Let's keep moving. I will tell you more of what you want to know as we continue our search. Yeah, no, we're just, we're, we're, go we're gonna put a pin in it and then we're gonna go ask our boyfriend. What the fuck? Look for more traces of the abyss. Yay. Like all that fighting men nothing. <laughs> all the way over here. Why are they all over the place? Yeah, you know he was alive, but don't know if he was a part of it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying is I know he was alive for it. I, I don't think Venti, like I know Venti has fought in wars and I know he's not a pacifist pacifist, but I see him as not laying a hand on humans as being his rule, like Zhao. Zhao has his rule of he only fights demons. I think Venti has a similar rule just because of his bond with that old bard in the past. So it wouldn't make sense for him to go wipe out, even if it was without a god or whatever. Over there! It's more ruin guards and abyss mages. Dane was just saying how these ancient machines are from Conria. So, did Conria have a lot of ruins that needed to be guarded? Paimon, they weren't ruins then. They were guarding the cities and towns of Conria. <laughs> no, ruin guard is the name modern people have given these machines. No one called them that 500 years ago. These ruin guards were known as field tillers by the people of Kanria. Field tillers? What a strange name. They were farming equipment. <laughs> it's not like you think. Field tiller was just a code name. The people of Kanria like to give code names to their weapons. Oh, thank God. It was not actually farming equipment. The land is not to be tilled with farming tools, but rather is to be fought for with steel and blood. This is how the field tiller came about. Like, we didn't have to fight Zhong Li or Venti, but I feel like those are gonna be the nicest gods we're gonna run into, other than maybe um, Dendro. Because, yeah, I feel like we're gonna have um, conflicts with the other ones. Fought for with steel and blood? Well, that's an interesting way of understanding tilling. Paimon doesn't think it's a very positive interpretation. No, it's not positive. <laughs> After the destruction of Kanria, these masterless field tillers went completely out of control. They wandered aimlessly over the centuries, gradually spreading to every corner of Tevat, perhaps resonating with the sorrow of other civilizations lost to time. They found their way to various ruins across the land, where they lie dormant. That sounds... so sad. You put it in 
attention to their suffering and just let's destroy them all. Which I'm not against destroying the room. Yeah, Pyron thinks you've been doing a real good job of that. <laughs> We've destroyed a lot of ruin guards. Once you understand more, those details won't mean much to you. But no matter their past, all that remains of them now is the danger they pose. So destroy them all. Destroy all the ruin guards. I'll go destroy all of these bastards. Destroy everything. Time for retribution! Everybody, everybody down. Okay, okay. Did we lose D Luke? We lost D Luke. Gosh, darn it. Everything. I need to up his defense or I can't tell which. Nice one dead. of a death by tricks. Uh oh, for you. Spinny arms. Oh, don't run off. Faster? Yes. Okay, faster. Keep back! This talisman seems connected to the Abyss Herald, but why would an Abyss Mage be carrying it? Perhaps it really does contain information about their operation. Ooh, their orders. But Vyman can't read the writing on it. <gasps> Is that the script of Conria? Maybe. That's a pretty big leap. It could just be Abyss Mage. Engulf the faith of an enemy in flame and bring glory to her highness, the princess. Dun dun dun! What? Is that what it says? Loom of fate, initial operation. They, the abyss, seem to be carrying out a large operation. The key word here is loom of fate. And also, you know, the princess. It seems like they are still launching the operation, or rather, are still conducting preliminary tests. Loom of fate? What 
What's that? Is it literally a fate weaving machine? From the horrible feeling Paimon's been getting, those eerie ruins are super likely to be related to this fate weaving operation. Interesting. So, Dane, what message does this talisman contain? I'm reading it now. Oh, uh, goody. Hmm. An ambitious operation. But some parts are difficult to understand. How so? In short, the first phase of the plan is related to Osayo, Overlord of the Vortex. Oh, you mean, you mean the plan to free him? The Overlord of the Vortex? You mean that god in the ocean? Crushed by the Jade Chamber. What do they want with Osayo? I know of your past heroics regarding Devalin. And I also know of the Abyss Order's role in the Storm Terror incident. Who knows what's going on, but it definitely seems like they're plotting something and they're gonna bring everybody down with them. Though you may not have been aware of it at the time, you were thwarting an Abyss Order operation similar to this one. Last time it was Venti's old friend! This time it's a huge ancient god! The Abyss Order keeps setting their sights higher and higher! Will the Abyss Order use their lies and dark magic to corrupt Osayo, just as they did Devalin? I don't think they need to corrupt Osayo. Osayo was pretty evil. He was gonna destroy everything just by waking up. They don't need to ask him to destroy everything. No. From the contents of the Talisman, this operation goes one step further. Oh? They won't just corrupt Osile's mind. They also plan to use the ancient technology behind the field tillers to completely transform Osile's body. Joke for which is his intended Mecha Godzilla. They want to make Mecha Godzilla. <laughs> is that even possible? No, but there's a whole movie about it anyway. So wait! The Abyss Order wants to make some sort of cybernetic squid god of mass destruction? Cybernetic Kraken sounds, uh, pretty dangerous and also pretty cool. Very few people today truly understand the civilization of Kanria. Though, of course, the accuracy of that understanding itself is difficult to judge. Only the Abyss Order has consistently sought out the remnants of Kanria. Despite being far from human, they seek out this lost human civilization quite persistently. Robotic Cthulhu. Yeah, I I think we should stop the robotic Cthulhu plan. I'm sorry, that one that one's a bad idea. <laughs> the talisman's message states that they will use the defiled statue as a base, attaching Osile's limbs to construct a mechanized god. Yeah, no, they're making Mecha Godzilla. Mechanized Godzilla. <laughs> That's just Mecha Godzilla. <laughs> and the new core that shall replace the orb usually held by the Statue of the Seven is the eye of the very first field tiller. Ah, oh, that's why they're destroying all of the ruined guards. The eye of the very first field tiller? <sighs> Oh, Paimon gets it! All those Abyss Mages are looking for the special eye, right? Okay, but how do we know which Ruin Guard is the oldest? It would seem so. This whole thing keeps getting more complicated. But basically, it all has to do with that eerie statue of the Seven we saw, right? Yes. According to the Talisman, the eye should be placed in the hands of the defiled statue thereby imbuing the newly born god with the power to topple the divine thrones of Celestia. Celestia? Oh boy, the Abyss Order sure isn't holding back with this plan. Nope. Hmm. Since no one knows where the first field tiller is, how about we take the information about the statue as the starting point for our investigation? It looks like Venti. We should probably go ask Venti. Yeah! That tone-deaf bard is too difficult to track down anyway. Let's go to the cathedral first and ask around. Maybe we'll learn something. I feel like if we just went into a field and yelled his name, he would show up. But yeah, let's go to the church. The cathedral. Hmm. Huh? What's the matter? 
it, Dane? Nothing. Let's get moving. What experience do you have with the cathedral, Dane? <laughs> Going to church. Take me to church. Do, do, do. I'm gay. And I don't remember the song.